Hey everyone, this is Jeff. Today we have another really unusual slug, and something like this can only come from the mind of Tim Hamilton, the ballistic machinist. Using his mad programming and machining skills, he came up with what he calls the Octo Slug. This is an eight sided slug made out of copper, copper alloy of some sort, and weighs in at 1.33 ounces. That's pretty hefty. Now, even though it is eight sided, it still has that traditional air rifle pellet shape, which we call the Diabolo shape. The slug has 42 flat surfaces on it. That's a lot of machine work there. Beautiful job, Tim. Let's see how it shoots. Welcome back, Calflator folks. Officer Greg and Jeff behind the camera, back out here with you at the undisclosed shooting range, official sanctioned safety shooting range. And you guys have seen before uh, creations made by a fan favorite, Tim Hamilton. Tim Hamilton from Ballistic Machinist has designed hundreds of designs, it seems like, over the years and sent us stuff uh, of all different shapes and sizes. This is a wacky one, too. Uh, Tim is so good that they actually made a multicultural Broadway show all for him. You might have seen it called Hamilton. Um, Wait, it's not? <laughs> no. sounds, produ sounds, the producer's people, telling me that's a different some Hamilton. Some of our viewers will believe that. you got to be careful. Producers are telling me that's a different Hamilton, but I think Tim should have his own Broadway show because he has sent us today what we, he calls the Octo Slug. It's an eight-sided slug. It's actually got 42 different planes on it. Jeff's going to do the math for you and show you on a close-up here how many, uh, how those eight sides turn into 42 sides. But we're going to try this Octo Slug out here today, see if it flies straight. It's all copper. Yeah. It's 1.33 ounces, so it's it's kind of on the heavy side. So uh, Doug's waiting for us downrange. He's going to take one in the vest and see kind of what they do. You know, all the standard you tests. Always got to start with a big target. And, yeah. and you know, if, that's, if it's really, you know, bad, we could probably still hit the target. Well, as we found out when we tried to shoot some long range the other day, uh, shooting a small target or longer rages, we ended up shooting them all over the dirt and then we just waste them all. So yeah. uh, Tim has sent us six of these. We're going to start with Doug and his, his broad muscular chest um, up close, and then we'll work in some other targets and let you know how they do. Let's go check them out. Here we go. Oh, this thing had some recoil. I imagine. I didn't get a reading. Did you see anything? Not really. I think it knocked it out again. Knock the battery out. Oh my. Well, he hit the target, but how did the slug fly? As we can see, it's flying kind of nose up, but as it gets closer, it almost seems to be stabilizing itself. Now we didn't mention it, but this was shot through a smooth bore, so we didn't have that spin stabilization. I can't say I was thrilled with that one, but maybe they'll improve as we progress. So this slug hit high and left and went way to the back, almost, almost to the very back layer here of Kevlar. Wow. It is deep. It almost made it through. And there is the base. It's all about the base. Let me see if I can that thing out of there it is really in there 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 it is good grief <laughs> ah. it's like giving birth it goes in here. so easy it's hard to come out yep that's what she said <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go it's a good thing i have these probably all mushroomed out it's a good thing i have these dainty piano playing digits oh look at that almost perfect shape i don't think there's any deforming? No mushrooming at all. I thought it would smash out of Pretty hard, yeah. It is quite hard. I don't know what... Here there's I'll... different grades of copper, obviously, and well, that this seems is to be some... a very hard one. I mean, if anything, maybe the head is tilted just a little bit. I'll set it right up there so you can focus in on it. But um, there is not much deformity there. So Tim was not sure if these octo slugs would even engage the rifling, but we're gonna try it out of a fully rifled barrel. Rifling makes everything better, right? We're having rifled weather today. It's a beautiful 70 degrees out here today. So rifling makes everything better. Let's give the Octo Slug a try and see what it does with a fully rifled barrel. 30 pound lead plate. Full rifling. That's how much it cost? Yes, mate. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go on the orange square. Orange square. So 
so it went a little bit left as you guys saw however that thing really plowed in there looks like it plowed in a little bit on its side probably it was, looked like it was going straight oh, okay it like maybe it turned or something yeah it really uh really left a hell of a cavity and i don't know if you guys can see this but that one says og on it, it. says og on it it was signed evidently yeah. Evidently, this one was customized. It's got OG on the back. Yeah, I still can't get it out. It's really, 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 really wedged in there. You can see that the um, the little head of it kind of collapsed down over the. It looked like it looks like it collapsed uniformly too. Yeah, it mushroomed really uniformly. Yeah. Which another indicator that it probably smacked nose on and then just kind of turned for some reason. Did a little... It was shot on a little bit of an angle, so that may have done that. Yeah, a little Tokyo drift in there. There you go. So, uh, but yeah, the nose did collapse down over the little Diablo skirt, but look at this, oh, back. It almost wanted to come through. That's pretty good. Little, little bulge and some crack. <laughs> and if you can't get a little bulge and some crack on a weekday, right there, look at that. Pretty impressive though. Yeah. And I'll tell you, <laughs> on camera, both, I've, I've shot a couple of these now. They've got a hell of a punch to them. They've got a lot of recoil. So. Uh, that's a good thing there's only six of them because any more you'd probably have your shoulder on <laughs> probably ice. Probably walk off and get some uh, union scabs some or something. Some Gay. Yeah. Excuse me. All right, let's see if he can hit the ballistic gel gummy bear. All right. It's not super accurate yet, but I think we can do it. Okay, I have faith in you. I just don't have faith in the slugs this time. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Here we go. I think it went through the vest. It made it all the way through into the berm. Yeah. Wow. Powerful slug there. We were a little surprised with this one because not only was it uh, fairly accurate, it just barely left of center. Of course, I was aiming for dead center. Um, obviously passed right through our, our ballistic gummy bear. This is the surprising part though. It hit our vest. We expected to catch it so we could show you guys. When I walked up here, the vest was laying here like this. Well, that, that's a big, that's, that's what we call a BFC right there. That uh, slug made it straight on through the vest, took a little Kevlar fibers with it. So, Jeff and I went down here to the safety berm and we did a little burrowing. Um, we ended up scooping the thing out of dirt and it came tumbling down the safety berm. And there it is, almost. And we didn't have a metal detector this time. No, it's really weird. But that is almost 100%. Just packed with dirt. Right, like new in box. So it's got a little dirt on it. Took a little luster off of it, but uh, boy, that thing could just about be removed. Ooh, you know, weird dings there. Maybe going through the rifling or something. A little rounded. Yeah, Very right. weird. Rifling makes everything better. So. Yeah, soft enough, to, luckily, to obturate. Anyway, so we're uh, regaining some faith in these because of the accuracy. First two were a little goofy. Yeah. This one, however. Yeah, I think it was you, man. Probably. It's always you. It's the areolus <laughs> effect. The earth, you know, I shot and then the earth turned and then round hit left. Yes. It's because it's almost daylight savings time in Australia or something, I don't know. <laughs> but no, it's, uh, it's good that they're actually coming around again. And you guys will be able to see on the high-speed camera whether or not they're flying straight or whether they're dumping high and low, so. This one didn't have OG on the back, so maybe that's... Oh, that was a plane. Oh, I, I usually put so some good. kind of mark on there to see if it's turning. I forgot on that one. Wow. I'm pretty surprised that Greg was able to find that slug in that berm. It went through the gel, went through the vest, hit the dirt, skipped up and went into the berm. And I knew I put some kind of marking on the back of that slug. But that one was super accurate. It was flying nose first and just gives you an idea of how much power that thing has when it's flying properly that it would actually go through a Kevlar vest too. All right, here we go. Tell your viewers we're shooting next to a mountain of methane. No, you, we don't want to. When you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh. oh. Okay, I'm ready. There we go. Holy shit. Wow, it, good, it went the other way. I actually couldn't see it. Okay, I'm ready. There we go. In the rush, Greg missed with the octo slug, so then we had a flaming can of butane we had to deal with. Didn't want to get near that thing. 
So Greg shot it with the buckshot and took care of the problem. It didn't light up anyway, so it was probably a bad idea to begin with. I thought it'd still be interesting to show you guys. Okay, whenever you're ready. Here we go. Oh, oh no! Uh oh. Oh no! Uh -oh. oh, it's safe. It's not in the dirt. We should have had a tarp to catch the table. Dang table. So it hit a little bit low. I'm not sure if you guys can see. Maybe I'll put something dark behind it. Does that help? Yeah, we can see it all right. It hit a little bit low, made a nice little, I don't know if you'd call it cavitation or not, but it seemed to be spinning through there because we got some wide spots and some thin spots and then pass right on through the outside of the jelly here. But here's what's cool. Well, don't pay no attention to the water. We, we washed off the jelly, but the uh, just the bulging of the gel, the slug did not pass through. You look, you can see the bottom of the in fact, there's its wound track if you want to see that a little bit better. The slug did not come out of the gel, but just the expansion of the gel was enough to rip this high-tech Kevlar <laughs> moon-qualified sunshade. So that was kind of cool to see. Yeah, that's, kind of, that's very kind of neat. And then, of course, we have a uh, high-tech non-fleece ballistic backstop here. It caught the thing and it tumbled to the ground right here on the other side of the No, table. it didn't. I saw it in the, in yeah. the camera. It I caught it. You can see it at uh, 4.32 seconds. <laughs> if you go back and look, you guys are wrong. And I like telling you that. <laughs> no, we did find it right here at the bottom of the table. We know this is the one. And once again, just about perfect condition. Yeah. This was out of a rifled barrel. It's got little tiny shine marks, little burnish marks there where it's uh, contacting something on its way out. But boy, that thing's in great shape. Okay, let's review the high-speed camera footage. Lots of energy dumped there. It knocked our table over. Fortunately, the gel did not fall in the dirt this time, though. We'll slow it down a little more. We can see the slug twisting its way through the gel, making a nice temporary wound cavity. We had that sunshade underneath there. Try to get some more light up into the gel from the sunlight we had. Well, we got an artist who can draw back. It, it's a lot better than my pig from last week. I don't know, that shark slash tornado to, uh, uh, tomahawk or whatever the hell kind of pig that was, it looked like an eel mixed with a, mixed with a <laughs> Some torpedo. people said it looked like a, a steer. Oh, yeah, it was like a cave drawing. Somebody, somebody had that a comment. That was freehand, uh, you know, I tagged that with my spray can. Yeah, well, I tagged this with a Sharpie real quick. I drew a picture of uh, Frank Hill from King of the Heap, and we're gonna put uh, one of uh, Tim's October October rounds. <laughs> Pumpkin Oct spice. Optomom, Octomom right around. <laughs> what happened to Octomom? Clown car vagina. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because so many people jumped out of that thing. Okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're gonna try one of Tim's Octo slugs right there in the front of Frank's through, nose. Again, through a smooth bore. This, smooth I, bore. Yeah. Hasn't been the most accurate, but Jesus Christ, we got something the size of a watermelon down here. Uh, we're 15 yards, 12, 15 yards away. Yeah. I, I think we can do it. Okay. You can do it. <laughs> okay, whenever you're ready. All right, here we go. On the news. Hopefully. Oh. Oh. That looked like a centered shot. Hopefully. Oh! oh. Given the smoothbore shotgun another try, here comes the slug. Again, it's kind of in that nose up position like we saw in that first shot. But this time it was very accurate. I'm not completely sure what's causing it. Maybe the uh, recoil of the gun is snapping the nose up a little bit. I'm not sure. If you've got any ideas, let me know. But anyway, I think you'll agree that watermelons make better targets than pumpkins. All right, so tell us below in the comment section what you think about these rounds. They're definitely an interesting shape. Uh, we got mixed results out of them. They seem to go a little cattywampus at first. That, that could be my loads. It could be Jeff's loads. So yeah. Let's, let's blame Jeff this time. Yeah, I'm going to take the blame. We're usually blaming this guy, but uh, I didn't have anything to do with the loads. So, but we got a, we got a, a very accurate one, at least one accurate one out of the smoothbore. We got one accurate one out of the rifled, uh, the fully rifled barrel. So. Uh, we were pretty impressed with them. We recovered most of them, and uh, they held together pretty damn well. Oh, yeah. 
So good job, Tim, and good job on that Broadway show. That was uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Didn't have a whole lot to do with your ballistic machining, but. Look at that. Recovered three. They're nearly perfect. Yeah, nearly perfect. I couldn't perfect. find any more. I need a metal detector. <laughs> or, a, or a 200 by 200 foot tarp. Yeah, that would have, I'd find <laughs> it easy as that. But we were uh, pleasantly surprised. And I don't know, Jeff, if you want to come on over and take a look in this bag real quick. No. Yes, you do. <laughs> I collected up this stuff just for your patrons. Uh, Jeff and I are going to sign these pieces of Frank Hill. And uh, so oh, See, we actually, you know, cinema. people ask us all the time, oh, who cleans up your mess? No, like, we, we clean up our mess. We don't have any high-tech production Mom crew. doesn't come over here and clean up after us uh, or nothing like that. Paul Farrell or, uh, or Hitchcock 45, or we don't have any crew that comes in after the uh, commercials start rolling and clean up our range force. In fact, I cleaned up a bunch of stuff from old ranges that we... Uh, that we find out here. It's like Easter out here every day. So. Yeah. Anyway, we thank you guys for stopping by and joining us on yet another uh, wild and wacky slug adventure. And uh, join us on the next video. If you're extremely bored, you're, you're uh, chained to a wall or you can't get away, you can't turn off the TV, maybe you're paralyzed and you're watching TV in a hospital, switch over to uh, Dan OG's Danger Show. I've got a couple of funny videos over there. And in fact, by the time you see this, I'll probably have a Beretta 1301 uh, tactical review up. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Me too. Yeah. I'm looking forward to making it. <laughs> so uh, I've, I've shot a lot of uh, footage and a lot of rounds. In fact, I've I've shot several hundred rounds. Most of it was Federal Flight Control just to get that video. So swing by OG's Danger Show. But we thank you for stopping by, Tau Fighter Mouse. And we will see you guys on the next video.